Everyone loves receiving dividends. It's a great feeling getting the notification on your phone that a dividend has landed in your account. It's that thing that some YouTube creators are obsessed with. Passive income. Receiving money whilst going about your day as normal. But it's never as easy as it sounds and it's a pain to build your own dividend stock portfolio. You never know which stocks to include or what weightings to keep them at and running your own dividend stock portfolio can often be very stressful and time consuming. Luckily, as UK investors, we now have a great range of dividend ETFs available that make investing for dividends much more simple and potentially less risky due to instant diversification. In this video, I'll start off by going through in more detail why you might be interested in investing in a dividend ETF. I'll then look at two of the most popular dividend ETFs that frequently feature in this type of video and share my thoughts, before going over the dividend ETF that in my opinion is one of the best options out there for UK investors. Hopefully this video will provide you with a foundation to research further and decide which, if any of these ETFs have a place in your portfolio. Importantly, I'll also finish by discussing some things that I believe everyone should consider before deciding to invest in a dividend ETF. It's not all sunshine and rainbows when it comes to dividends. The research I do for the videos on this channel make me a better and more informed investor and it allows me to come across and discover more funds I may have missed before. This video is not financial advice or a recommendation of what to invest in. It is for educational and entertainment purposes. When investing, your capital is at risk. So, why might you want to include a dividend ETF in your portfolio? Well, one reason could be because you've already finished the accumulation stage of your wealth and now you want to draw an income from it. A dividend ETF will aim to provide you with a regular income from your portfolio and buying a dividend fund, rather than trying to pick individual stocks yourself, will offer you instant diversification, be much less time consuming and allow you to enjoy your dividend income more than if you are maintaining an individual stock portfolio yourself. However, there are other less risky options available if you want to draw an income from your portfolio such as government bonds, which especially right now have attractive yields. Remember, when drawing an income from an ETF, although diversified, there is no guarantee that your capital will grow or even maintain its value. Dividend ETFs are not just for people looking to take an income from their investments, they can also be used by those looking to grow their wealth as well, as you can reinvest all dividends back into your portfolio to buy more shares in the ETFs of your choice. For some, the psychological benefit of receiving dividends can keep them motivated and allow them to keep on with their investing habits. Seeing the dividends come in can be a nice reassurance when maybe the value of your stocks is stagnant or going down. The motivating factor of dividends should not be understated if it is enough to keep someone interested in investing who otherwise may not be. It's also worth remembering that dividends can make up a significant part of your total investment return over the long run, which is the increase in the value of your shares plus any dividends received. Dividend ETFs can vary greatly, and I know some growth investors will be rolling their eyes now, as they know that for someone looking to build wealth, dividend ETFs are often not the best option, as they tend to deliver lower total returns than a simple market cap weighted index fund. That is true to some extent, however, I think you'll be shocked by one of the ETFs in this video. Without further ado, let's jump into looking at some of the top dividend ETFs available for UK investors. First up, we have the iShares UK Dividend ETF with the ticker symbol IUKD on the London Stock Exchange. iShares describe IUKD as an ETF that seeks to track the performance of an index composed of 50 stocks with leading dividend yields from UK listed companies, excluding investment trust. Sounds great at first, picking top yielding UK stocks and packaging them together in a fund for you, and indeed that does mean the ETF will have a high dividend yield, with the current 12 month trailing yield standing at 5.63%. So from looking at that yield, it is unsurprising that UK investors can be drawn to this ETF, especially considering we can sometimes be guilty of a home bias and tilt towards wanting UK stocks. However, let's take a close look at the ETF, because it's not all as good as it seems. Firstly, the ongoing charge for IUKD is 0.4%, which is a bit on the high side, but dividend ETFs do tend to have higher fees due to them being more specialised than a market cap weighted index. And of course, it's not all about fees, we have to consider all aspects of the ETFs together. Looking at the index it tracks, which is the FTSE UK Dividend Plus Index, we can see that high yielding stocks are picked from the FTSE 350 Index, which is the large cap FTSE 100 and the mid cap FTSE 250 combined, and then they are weighted by their one year forecast dividend yield as opposed to market capitalisation. The fact it uses forecast dividend yield could be considered a good thing, as it is forward looking rather than backward looking, but I do have to say, the index immediately does not really sell itself much, when straight away on the fact sheet, you can see that the simple market cap weighted FTSE 350 index has offered greater total returns than the UK Dividend Plus index. I'll discuss this more, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention straight away, as it highlights how picking stocks purely on their dividend yield may not be a good strategy when seeking the best total return. So, 
We now know how the ETF picks the stocks within it, but let's see how that pans out in the breakdown. Looking at the top 10, you'll probably recognise all of the companies here, as they are mostly UK household names. And the immediate thing that stands out is that it is heavily weighted towards the financial sector, with five of these top 10 either being a bank or a company that provides financial services. This is more apparent when you look at the sector breakdown, which reveals that nearly 35% of the fund is in the financial sector. This is very important to note, because unlike the FTSE 100 which has more weighting in defensive sectors, IUKD being dominated by financials means that its performance is heavily impacted by the state of the UK and global economy. This point brings us on to looking at the performance of IUKD. Remember, as this is a distributing fund, the performance is based on dividends not being reinvested. On the 5 year chart, the ETF is down 21.65%, which goes to show, if you are using this fund to draw an income, your original capital invested would have been slowly eroded away over the past five years. You may think that is unfair though, as if you were reinvesting the dividends, then the performance would be much better. Well, that is true, it is better, but it is still very underwhelming. Using the iShares website, we can see that IUKD, with gross income reinvested, would have given you a 10 year return of 32.32%, and that return annualized is 2.84% which really is not impressive at all. What stands out for me as well is the big difference between the ETF and the benchmark, which is probably due to the relatively high fee of 0.4% that iShares charge. That is something you definitely need to be aware of. The final part of IUKD that I want to take a look at is the dividend history. For those who may be looking to invest in a dividend ETF to draw an income, rather than reinvesting dividends, it is even more important to look at the dividend history, as you would like to see that your income from a fund would at the very least be roughly similar each year, and preferably growing year on year to counter the impact of inflation. So I have created this dividend history chart using the data from the iShares website, and what is obvious here is that the dividend amount per share has never fully recovered recovered since the financial crisis, and again it is yet to recover from the Covid crash as well in 2020, with the 2022 dividend amount per share being less than it was in 2019. The fact that the dividend amount per share is less in 2022 than it was in 2006 is not a very good sign at all. If you had bought the ETF back in 2006 for the purpose of drawing an income from it, your income would have actually decreased despite there being over 15 years worth of inflation since then so your real income would be drastically less. This decrease in dividend amount per share would not be too bad if the actual value of the shares had grown over time, but as we have seen, the share price has also declined for IUKD. To sum up my thoughts on IUKD, and remember these are my thoughts only and not a recommendation either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. I'm not a fan of the overly simple way in which the index it tracks picks stocks. Picking and rebalancing based almost entirely on forecast dividend yields does not really seem good to me. I'd also note that 50 stocks is not very diversified for an ETF, although it is probably more than you could manage yourself if you're building your own dividend stock portfolio. The total return is very underwhelming, with both the share price and the dividend amount per share declining since its inception. Due to that, I'd say the high fee of 0.4% is unjustified for this ETF. For comparison, you can get a simple FTSE 100 tracker for a fee of 0.07% and a FTSE 250 tracker for a 0.1% fee, which have both offered better total returns. Of course, past performance is no guarantee of future results, so take that with a pinch of salt. And my final thought is, why limit yourself to UK stocks if you're going for a diversified dividend fund? There's a whole load more stocks out there in the world. I personally would want an exposure beyond just the UK. That brings me on to the next dividend ETF that I'll look at, which is the Vanguard FTSE All World High Dividend Yield ETF, with the ticker VHYL on the London Stock Exchange. This is another incredibly popular dividend ETF, which, as the name suggests, includes stocks from all over the world. The number of stocks in the fund is currently 1,764, and therefore it is much, much more diversified both in terms of geography and number of holdings than IUKD, which for me, already makes it more attractive. Vanguard describes the fund's objective as seeking to track the performance of the FTSE All World High Dividend Yield Index, and this index is comprised of large and mid-sized company stocks, excluding real estate trusts, in developed and emerging markets that pay dividends that are generally higher than average. The dividend yield is not currently showing on the Vanguard website, but according to Invest Engine, the dividend yield is currently 3.6%, so definitely higher than a standard all-world index tracker. Looking at the ongoing charge, the figure is 0.29%, which is very reasonable for a dividend ETF. 
As I mentioned earlier, dividend ETFs do tend to have higher fees than a standard index fund, and Vanguard offering an ongoing charge of 0.29% for a global dividend fund also makes me feel that iShares are taking the mick a bit, charging a 0.4% fee for their 50 stock IUKD fund, but I'll leave you to decide if that is a fair price. Moving on to take a closer look at the index, as well as what the Vanguard description already mentioned, the FTSE Russell fact sheet also notes that stocks forecast to pay a zero dividend over the next 12 months are removed and the remaining stocks are ranked by annual dividend yield and included until the cumulative market cap reaches 50% of the total market cap of the FTSE All World. Similar to the index fact sheet for the FTSE UK Dividend Plus Index, we can immediately see that the All World High Dividend Yield Index has underperformed the FTSE All World in terms of total returns over the past five years, although at times it has been pretty close. This serves as yet another reminder that a lot of dividend ETFs may not be the best option for those seeking the highest total return. Of course, past performance does not guarantee future results, so keep that in mind. Moving back to the ETF breakdown, we can see that VHYL currently has a region exposure of 46.6% North America, 25.4% Europe, 16.3% Pacific, and 11.4% Emerging Markets. So the dividend index methodology results in North America being underweighted when compared to a standard market cap weighted index, and Europe, Pacific and emerging markets being slightly overweighted. Looking at the top 10, we can see that there is no single stock that has a dominant weighting here, but all these top companies, aside from Nestle, are US stocks. These US giants are great dividend payers with a long history of dividend payments, whilst also for the most part growing their share price, which the same could not be said for a lot of UK dividend stocks. However, looking at the sector breakdown, financials is the most dominant sector, just like IUKD, with over a quarter of the fund in the financials sector. It is still more diversified from a sector point of view though, with the most notable difference being that healthcare is the third largest sector here. Anyway, that is the full breakdown of VHYL, but I'll now take a look at the performance. VHYL is a distributing fund, so the performance we see here is based on dividends not being reinvested, just capital appreciation. On the five year chart, the ETF is up by 15.47%, which is a good sign, as it shows that if you were withdrawing the dividends you received as income, the value of your holding would not have actually declined and even had a decent increase. Obviously this is a big improvement compared to the 21.65% decline that IUKD fund had. But for those interested who will be reinvesting all dividends, how does the fund perform then? There is an accumulation version of VHYL with the ticker VHYG, so that could be of interest to some people. But unfortunately VHYG only has a few years of history, so I can't use Google Finance to do a five year comparison. We can look at the Vanguard website however, as that shows the performance with gross income reinvested. Here we can see that with all dividends reinvested, the fund has delivered a total return of 24.15% over the past five years, and 63.36% over the past 10 years. It's important to note that these figures are based off the net asset value being calculated in US dollars, so as a UK investor buying and selling the fund in British pounds, your performance will be slightly different. However, even taking into account that, this fund has certainly offered better total returns than our UKD over the past decade. Whether this is indicative of the decade to come is less certain, but it's worth considering. We all know past performance does not guarantee future results. It is also worth noting that the total return of VHYL is significantly below the total return of the simple market cap weighted FTSE All World, so yet another reminder that dividend ETFs do tend to have a history of underperforming. As with our UKD, the final part of VHYL I'll take a look at is the dividend history. I did not have to create my own chart for this one as there is a complete chart available on dividend max. This is cent per share in US dollars rather than pence per share but the most important thing we are looking at here is consistency and growth. Unfortunately the fund is not old enough to see what effect the financial crisis would have had but we can see the dividend amounts per share seem to be a lot less volatile than our UKD and importantly it seems to be more resistant to economic shocks, with the COVID dip in 2020 not being that bad of a dip at all here, and by 2021, the dividend amount per share had already recovered. Of course, this is not much data to go off of here, but it does look like VHYL provides a better dividend amount per share growth than IUKD. It is nice to see this amount per share growing, 
as it will help offset any inflation if you are taking the dividends as income. That is it for the run through of VHYL. To sum up my thoughts on this ETF, I personally think it's a much safer choice than IUKD due to its geographical diversification. You aren't limiting yourself to UK stocks. The performance and dividend consistency also seem to be much better than IUKD, although we can't take this to be indicative of the future for sure. I also think a 0.29% fee for a global dividend ETF is very reasonable, so nothing to complain about there. However, for an investor more interested in total returns, it is always worth considering that VHYL has underperformed its much simpler market cap weighted counterpart, VWRL. But it may still be of interest to you if dividends keep you motivated. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider leaving a like. It's really appreciated and helps the channel. Thank you. The third and final dividend ETF I'll go through is one that is much less well known than the first two. At first glance it may seem counterintuitive as a dividend ETF due to how different it is, but I do have to say it is one of the most impressive ETFs I've seen and it definitely deserves more attention. It is the Wisdom Tree Global Quality Dividend Growth ETF, ticker GGRP. Wisdom Tree state that the fund seeks to track the price and yield performance of the Wisdom Tree Global Quality Dividend Growth Index. So, unlike the previous two ETFs, Wisdom Tree are not using a third party index and have created their own index here. They say the ETF gives you access to high quality dividend growing companies from global developed markets which meet ESG criteria. And they state this may result in a dividend yield and income higher than a market cap index. This does seem to be true at the moment with the dividend yield currently standing at 2.35% for GGRP. Whereas an equivalent market cap weighted developed markets tracker such as iShares MSCI World, ticker IWRD, has a dividend yield of 1.45%. The total expense ratio for GGRP is 0.38%, which is a little on the high side, but unlike IUKD, as I will show, this expense ratio does seem to be somewhat more justified. And I know a yield of 2.35% may seem a bit low for a dividend ETF, but this fund is all about the quality of the dividend payers and dividend growth. Looking into the index on the fact sheet, we can see that the Wisdom Tree Index is comprised of dividend paying companies from global developed markets based on a quality and momentum screening. Companies must also pay regular cash dividends, meet minimum market cap and liquidity criteria, and meet some ESG criteria to be included in the index. And you can pause now if you want to read more about how the companies are ranked and picked. But to summarise it, it does as the name implies and picks dividend paying stocks that meet quality criteria. So the index is a bit more complicated than the previous two, but let's take a look at the breakdown of the ETF. First of all, looking at the country allocation, it's a developed world fund so we know what sort of countries to expect here. However, how it differs from a market cap weighted developed markets fund is that the US and Japan are underweighted, whereas Switzerland, UK and France seem to be overweighted. Moving on to the top 10 holdings, we can clearly see here that focus on quality dividend paying companies rather than those with the highest yields and you might be surprised to see the likes of Microsoft and Apple in a dividend ETF. If we go on to view all holdings we can scroll down and see that there are actually two UK companies here with significant weightings that have passed the quality filter, GSK and Unilever in 15th and 16th place respectively. Seeing the sector breakdown of this ETF further highlights how different it is from your standard dividend ETF. The largest sectors here are tech and healthcare, which shows how the quality filters Wisdom Tree have applied really leads to companies in growth sectors being selected as quality dividend payers. Looking at the performance really highlights how impressive this ETF has been so far. GGRP is the distributing version, so this is the performance without any dividends reinvested. And we can see on the five year chart, it is up by 50.85%, which is an incredible capital return for a dividend ETF and any ETF more generally. When we add VHYL and IUKD to the chart, the performance difference is staggering. It's not even remotely close. GGRP have a lower dividend yield than these two, but it is clear that its total return will be much higher. I've referenced to the fact that dividend ETFs tend to underperform a market cap weighted index a couple times in this video. However, However, Wisdom Tree's dividend ETF seems to be different. GGRG is the accumulating version of GGRP, so we can compare GGRG to a standard accumulating developed world tracker to compare total returns. I will use SWDA, which is iShares accumulating MSCI world index tracker to compare it to. And using the five year chart, we can see that Wisdom Tree's global quality dividend growth fund has offered better total returns than a market cap weighted developed world tracker.
So not only would you be benefiting from the higher dividend payments if you're using the distributing version, GGRP, you could also be rest assured that the fund has a history of providing better total returns than a standard index fund. So based on this performance, I'm sure even those that usually aren't interested in dividend funds will want to take a further look at this ETF. Finally, I'll look at the dividend history. The ETF is not that old, so there's not much data to go off here, but I compiled what I could off of the Wisdom Tree website to make this dividend history chart. As I say, we do not have much to go off, but it does seem that the ETF barely suffered much of a dip to its dividends at all in 2020, and the dividend amount flew up in 2021, and despite 2022 looking to be an exceptional year for dividend growth, the general trend with the limited data we have does seem to be one of the dividend amount per share growing. So, to sum up my thoughts on this ETF, I'd have to say of all of the dividend ETFs I've come across, and I did look into a lot more than the ones showed in this video, this Wisdom Tree ETF is in my opinion not only one of the best dividend ETFs available, but maybe one of the best ETFs available full stop and I'll definitely be considering adding this ETF to my portfolio. It has great performance, seems to beat developed markets trackers, and also delivers dividends greater than the developed markets trackers as well. However, on the other hand, there is limited data due to it being a relatively new fund, so there's always a chance that this outperformance has been coincidental and may not continue. Past performance does not guarantee future results, but overall, this does look like a very attractive ETF for UK investors. Before I go over my final thoughts and things you should consider, if you're interested in any of the featured ETFs, you'll be able to find them on a range of investment platforms. In terms of platforms I use, all of them will be available on Trading212 and Hargreaves Lansdowne. Vanguard's platform only offers its own funds, so you'll only be able to find VHYL on there. However, my preferred ETF investment platform is InvestEngine, and that has all the ETFs mentioned available. I would only ever recommend platforms I use myself and genuinely like. InvestEngine has over 560 ETFs to choose from and has no platform fees for the DIY stocks and shares ISA, meaning the only fees you pay are the fees of the ETFs themselves. I've been using InvestEngine since the start of this tax year, and its great range of ETFs and fee structure makes it perfect for my core portfolio. If you're interested in opening an Invest Engine account, I do have a link in the description that'll give you a nice bonus of up to £50 when you invest £100 yourself. T's and C's apply, and please consider all ISA and tax rules when opening your account. So that is it for the run through of free dividend ETFs. I'll quickly go over my final thoughts and things I think everyone should consider. Firstly, you should ask yourself why do you want to invest in a dividend ETF in the first place? If you're investing in a dividend ETF with the purpose of withdrawing the dividends as an income, it's worth considering that some dividend ETFs, namely IUKD, have a track record of eroding your initial investment's value, and also dividends are not guaranteed and can fluctuate massively, which makes them a bit of an unreliable source of income. If I was looking at investing for income at the moment, I'd probably struggle to convince myself to go for a dividend ETF when bond yields are so high at the moment but it's up to you to consider all options. For most people watching this video, I imagine they'd be interested in investing in a dividend ETF as part of their plan to grow the size of their portfolio. In that case, it is worth remembering that total return is what matters. It does not matter how high a dividend yield is if the decline in the value of the shares offsets most, if not all, of that dividend payment. So I would avoid most dividend ETFs if my goal was to maximise returns over the long run. However, with the Wisdom Tree ETF now on my radar, my attitude towards dividend ETFs ETFs have changed somewhat and I will be considering adding that ETF to my portfolio. Let me know what you think in the comments below and as always thank you for watching.